Welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, where we bring you conversations with the top business minds on Long Island and around the nation every week. Featuring expert consultants and small business owners who have found success, but are also willing to share their top tips, failures, and give gritty, matter-of-fact advice based on their firsthand experience. Now, let's Let's get get down down to business business on on Tower Talk Talk Business Business Radio Radio, on on the the voice voice of Nassau Nassau Community College, College, 90.3 WHPC. And welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Danisha Boston-Hill, CEO of Keeper of the Brand Marketing and Digital Agency, along with Ray Sweat, AVP of Community Relations at Jovia Financial Credit Union. We're focused on being the premier resource for business and entrepreneurship. We bring you weekly business advice tips, tools, and services that help you grow your business, plus We interview the top business leaders in the industry. You know, they say girls should never be afraid to be smart. That they is Emma Watson. Helping providing you with business empowerment today is Charlene Brown Waynes, Esquire. Charlene, welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Charlene is an attorney, college administrator and professor, consultant and retired police executive with over 26 years of experience in police operations and law. Currently a member of the faculty at Berkeley College, Charlene serves as an online instructor responsible for delivering engaging online instructions in the area of law and criminal and criminal justice. Her private security experience includes security management positions with ESPN and the USTA. Ms. Brown has received numerous awards and plays an active role in many social and civic organizations. And she's affiliated with law enforcement and the legal community. Charlene, we are so excited to have you and to just take a deep dive into your world. Looking forward to it. Now, Charlene, you know, can you just tell us, you know, what are some of the struggles and challenges you face? You faced as a woman in the workplace being in law enforcement for decades. Sure. I'm always happy to. And 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 I always like to reflect back on that period. So I joined law enforcement in the 80s. And so it was sort of the dawn of the new era for policing because for women in New York, the role of a police officer for women was relatively new. It wasn't until around 1973 or 1974 that women were no longer called police women, but called police officers. So when I joined the ranks in 1985, that was almost about nine or 10 years in. And so it wasn't a common, a common place for women to be um, in the police precinct. I can recall days that I was working and I was the only woman in an entire precinct. Um, if two women worked together and we worked together in a police car, that was unheard of as 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 well so um at that time it was it was it was it was a challenge because sometimes although you were around lots of people and there were over twenty thousand police officers you 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 felt really alone and it was important to sort of learn how to stand on your own in the sea of, of 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 men um one of the biggest challenges I think it would be is um, would be just learning how to or or just standing on your own in that. But in that was a I, I had a source of strength because I realized that although we are men and women, we go through the same thing. So we would be in a car, for example, going to a very serious emergency, a shooting or a robbery, and I felt maybe have felt a little nervous and anxious and figuring out what to do. And I would glance over to my partner, who was a male, and I noticed that he was feeling the same thing. And so in that, I found strength that, hey, we're all humans, and although I may be a woman, um, a man's going to feel the same way I am. And so for that, that allowed me to continue to stand on my own and to understand what I brought to the table as a policewoman. Um, I came from a long line of police officers and I knew I had my father's shield and I knew I walked in with a legacy and that allowed me to have confidence to continue to move on um, during those times. I, you know what? You you led right into our next question. I was going to ask <laughs> you, what inspired you? Because I know uh, you're second generation. Yes, I am. Yes, I, I am. Our, our family used to have a joke. Them, um, Everyone in our house 
worked for, were affiliated with the police department except for the family dog. So that was <laughs> sort of the joke at, at the time. And so, um, yeah, so I grew up um, with, uh, um, uh, with, with, with a family who my, 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 my dad's family primarily came from the, the city, New York City. My mother's family came from the South. And being an African-American woman, um, um, my parents um, for my parents, and they felt a deep sense of, uh, of, of of the value of having what was called the civil working for the civil service and working for government, because they knew from their own struggles that there was equity in that system, more equity than there there, there were in, in 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 the private sector. So they would continue to instill in us the value of taking every promotional exam, even though I was majoring, wanted to be a doctor, <laughs> majored um, in, in, in accounting, they made me take all of those tests. And one day my dad said to me, honey, I'm, I'm not a doctor or a lawyer, but I'm a police officer, so I can guide you in that way. And it was at that moment I decided to follow in his fo- footsteps, and I uh, joined the police um, department after he became a police officer and continued, and continued on, and actually began to even outrank him, which was also an interesting moment for for us together. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. So that that was truly the family the family business. It was. It was a family business. Absolutely. So now, you know, you spent years in in the um department and then went to night school to become an attorney. Yes, I did. So uh knowing that I wanted more um I I, I actually stopped college for um, a brief moment to join the police academy. The police academy in New York is six months. And so one week before graduating, I resumed my college studies and then received my um, my bachelor's degree a year after. But I knew I wanted a postgraduate degree, but at that time wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And I realized that law was um, a profession that I was interested in, a profession that had uh, lots of different opportunities, and that w- wasn't going to lock me into some choices, so I decided to attend law school. Um, so I applied for uh, law school when I was a police officer with about two two years in the police department and wound up starting law school um, in my fourth year as a police officer. So I worked in the daytime, and I went to law school at night. Oh, that's great. So you, you're basically saying women can have it all. I think women can have it all. I think we can. One of the things that I've personally learned is we can have it all, but we may not be able to have it all at the same time. Um, And I think it's important to know that. And I think it's important to sit back and reflect on what your goals and aspirations are and figuring out some form of balance. Um, Uniquely for me at that time, I was in my 20s, was not married, didn't have children, so it was easier for me to balance the work, had to have a work-life balance. I had a support system. I think having a support system um, is very important to come in, it comes into play when you are pursuing your work dreams and your home dreams, whether it's uh, friends, family, um, it's important to have that support system. So my support system in my, tw- in my 20s looked a little bit different, um, but I think you can have it all, but Maybe not all the time, maybe not at the same time, but looking back, you can achieve it. Oh, absolutely. And and, and it's a different world now. I mean, you worked in, uh, you know, law enforcement and law, you're basically your, almost your entire career. So um, those are male dominated positions uh, and you've overcome. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> But, but 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 it was interesting in that and and it's interesting to learn and look at the way um men think about things and 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 and, and act in positions and leadership positions and non leadership positions and the way women act in leadership positions and non leadership um, positions and i think and regardless of whether you're a man or a woman because we each have different characteristics and different traits we can learn from everyone and i've had mentors that were men and i've had mentors that were women um Moving in my career, sometimes I had to have more mentors that were men, but I, I, I think I learned some valuable lessons about how to be confident and how to assert myself um, and how to be unabashedly uh, ashamed in, of, of who I am and, and understanding how to wield power and authority, but also how to do it in a way that's respectful, to respect the people that worked for me and that I worked with and, and to respect the community. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Danisha Boston-Hill, and our guest today is Charlene Brown-Waynes Esquire. 
Now, Charlene, you are basically in your after hour, after life, I should say, you know, post department, you know, living your career as an attorney and also, um, you know, working in other facets, you know, such as your security experience, working with ESPN and USTA. How have you made that transition um, to, you know, I would say sports and entertainment from uh, leapfrogging from um, the police department? Yeah, so, um, yes, I, I, I first of all, I'd like to say it, it, it's, it's always important to think about your next act and learning how to pivot and move to something else. Um, and, and, and part of the culture in policing is knowing that it, it can be for a finite a career. We're fortunate because we can retire after 20 years. So most often some police officers are thinking about what's going to happen after and retirement. But for me, um, because I had interest in law and, 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 and other interests, I always knew that policing wasn't going to be my final career um, chapter in my career. So I was always looking forward. And it's, Interesting, though, that it was intentional that I knew I wanted to do other things. It wasn't intentional what those other things are going to be. And sometimes because you put your intentions out there, you never know how and when it's going to come back to you, but it does come back to you. So um, uh, there was a woman, and who she was one of the, the trailblazer pioneers, um, Alicia Parker. Um, she was a lieutenant, one of the first, one of the few women lieutenants in policing that I always looked up to, and um, ran into her because of my um, uh, some of my professional affiliations. And one, and 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 she was actually one of the first um, bodyguards for for the mayor's office, and everyone knew her. Um, and she was asked to to um, head up of a security department for ESPN, and. After I ran into her and had conversations, she asked if, 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 if I wanted to interview and work for her, and I thought it would be interesting and, and, and did. And that led to um, several year career of being a private cons- a security consultant, working with ESPN, working during Super Bowl Sunday um, and, and, um, and, and other high-profile events, managing the uh, security assets for ESPN. And so it was an interesting time and allowed me to learn about uh, how TV production works and how corporate security works, which is very different from policing. There are some similarities, but but but, but by and large, it, 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 there, there, there's a different skill set that you had to learn, and I was able to learn that. And that actually led years later to to a request for some uh, consulting work with the with the USTA, working with the US Open, um, and I was able to provide those services. So it was just sort of one sort of meeting that led to one thing that opened the door for something else. Um, uh, similar to my, my teaching, uh, one of my uh, mentors that I worked with went on for to have a job um, in, in, at, 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 at uh, St. John's University and asked me if um, I would be interested in teaching. Um, and at the time, I had an interest in teaching. And and I started to network with different people, and this opportunity came to me. And this, again, it opened another door. So it's good to have your intentions and put your intentions out. But for me personally, uh, the path to those intentions was sort of surprise and unexpected. And one action seemed to have led to another reaction to have gotten me to um, to, to those actual uh, jobs. I'm very grateful to have. Oh, fantastic! So now. You even taken some time to sit back, breathe, and become a published author. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, again, as a little girl, I always wanted to write, um, and um, I think it's important. I think everyone should be able to write their story, and I've been um, able to. Um, I was featured on a blog for the Vera Institute. Uh, I authored a chapter on counterterrorism um, after September 11th. Um, so yes, I've had an opportunity to write and would love to do some more writing. When do you, what, when do you find the time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I forgot the actual math on it cause I'm terrible in math, which is why I went to law school, but there are, there's 24 hours in a day. Um, and I think it's important to figure out in advance how you're going to manage that day and manage your time. And you can fill it up, but you also have to prioritize. And I do take the time out for self-care. Um, I love to exercise and work out. I think it's important. I, I practice yoga, and I think that's important for for, for um, mind and, and balance. And in my next, in, in my second chapter, as you called it, um, I do, I'm fortunate to do a lot of consulting work that 
allows me to stay home, and that allows me to to, to take a little bit of time <laughs> for myself. Um, but uh, I, 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 it's it's it, if you plan for what you want to do, you can get a lot accomplished. And I think it's important to wake up in, on your day in your day and make a list of the things you want to do and check them off as you get through your day. Absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit about your business and how you are helping young women entrepreneurs. Yes. So um, with my, my, my law practice, the law office of Charlene Brown, um, and my affiliated practice, Legal Nista, I like to work with small business startups, um, and, 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 and the majority of my clients are women. I like to work with women to help them sit down and figure out um, how to formally, legally structure their practices. Many women have great ideas about how to start their business and how to execute their business, um, but they don't know how to formally organize and structure their business. And they really shouldn't spend their time doing that. So I like to offer um, solutions for them, um, whereas providing, whether I'm providing them with forms, um, giving them assistance of drafting their agreements, uh, talking to them about how to create their legal entity, what is the best legal entity for them. And I like to help them and work with them to help them help them grow. Um, you know, in the United States, there are 11.6 million companies owned by women, and um, uh, those women companies employ over um, $9, nine million dollars uh, in revenue. So I think it's important to support women, and that's what I do with the, through the law office of Charlene Brown and through Legal Nista, which is my business consulting arm, where I consult women and work with them to grow their businesses and ensure that they have um, the compliance and legal structures in place. Now, at what point should someone come or contact you or, you know, someone who provides your services? Is it when I have the idea or is it once I'm just ready to go, you know, is this a part time business? Is it full time? Is it a little bit of all of the above? Uh, I think it's a little bit of all of the above. And I think it's never um, it, 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 it's never it, you should start as soon as you have the idea. Um, I'm happy to take consultations with 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 uh, small businesses as soon as they have the idea, because there's so many things that you have to do. You should set up your legal structure. You need a marketing budget. You need an advertising budget. You need a website. And sometimes you need um, money to do that. So to help you figure out what your startup budget should look like and what your actual startup should look like, um, I always like to have those conversations. And, and, and I'm happy to have people come back when they're ready to execute. Um, I also think that having that conversation helps to motivate people to move in that right direction because many times we may have an idea, we think about it, it becomes fleeting and it disappears. So coming to me and sitting down um, with me and, ha and taking that first step, I've had people that come back and said, you know, after this conversation, it really energized me to want to move forward. And then they're, they're anxious to find out about the next step. Oh, that's fantastic. So what makes you, you know, proud to really help these clients? Well, when I speak to many of the clients, um, when you hear the passion, so many people are passionate about their ideas. And so I, and when I think when, when, when entrepreneurs step out, they're stepping out out of passion. Sometimes people have a job and they're doing it because they need to earn money. They need to support their family. But entrepreneurs will do that out, sometimes out of necessity, but their idea comes from their passion. So when I sit there and I hear them you know, walk and speak into their truth and tap into their vision and their dreams. That makes me proud to know that I was a part of that. And of course, to see to see them successfully move on. Um, I've had one client that has started a successful not for profit, and you know she's doing great things and just moving on and growing it. And that makes me proud to not only see them, not only when they're passionate about when they're talking about their ideas, but actually to see the execution phase. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Charlene Brown Waynes Esquire. My name is Danisha Boston Hill on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Now, Charlene, you are also a part or actually on the board of the Ladies of the Third Thursday. Can you tell us a little bit about that organization, how they're helping entrepreneurs and their upcoming your monthly events that they host? 
Oh, yes, definitely. So as you said, Dinesha, I'm a member of an organization called Ladies of Third Thursdays. And Ladies of Third Thursday is a free, free, free meeting meetup group. And each month we gather together um, and we provide a place and a space for women to network and for women to share ideas and and for for women who maybe are interested in starting a business or to be motivated and be around other women who are interested in starting a business. Um, one of the things that we like to do as a give back is to host uh, our annual Women of Power Award Ceremony. And this year we are going to be hosting our third annual Women in Power Award Ceremony at the LaGuardia Plaza Hotel. And that event is going to be Thursday, March 19th at 6 p.m. And what we do is we honor 31 women because March has... 31 days in the month, um, and we honor we honor those women, and we honor their their their, their accomplishments. Um, so many times we hear about the accomplishments of of celebrities, but there's so many women doing so many powerful things in the community. So we like to take this time out of year during Women's History Month to spotlight women in in, in six or seven categories: media, community service, um, education, business, um, public service health, and we also honor a young rising star. So we hope that anyone listening to the audience would be happy to, would, 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 would uh, uh, like to attend our event, and they can find our information on Facebook if they just uh, put in the term Women of Power Awards, or just search Women of Power Awards, they would go to our event, or, or, or go to Eventbrite, they can find our link and they can sign up. We also have vending opportunities available for any small business that would like to vend at that event. Um, uh, uh, we have a sellout event each year. Oh, that's fantastic. And, I, you know, I've attended some of your events with full transparency from everyone, and it's really empowerful, and it speaks to your point of women being the fastest-growing business owners in the United States. Yes. So... Um, that's definitely uh, what we want to highlight. We want to continue to grow. We 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 want that because when when women are are faster fast growing businesses and we help to support our families. And so when both members of the household are gener generating income, then that family can continue to thrive and grow, and then continue to serve their community and give back to their community. Absolutely. Now, Charlene, you also wear the hat of delving into the real estate market. Yes. And, you, you, you know, and then you, you work with trust and estates development. You know, how do you know, do you do closings with real estate? And if there's some an attorney out there listening and they're a solopreneur attorney, you know, how do you decide what area should be your main focus? Is it your passion? Is it your expertise? Um, share with us a little bit about that. Sure. So um, I'm also a real estate broker, have a real estate brokerage, uh, Artemis Realty Group, um, and we focus on uh, 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 real estate investors. Um, but uh, to answer your question, if you're a new lawyer, um, what do you focus on? Um, for, for it, and, I, and I think the answer is different for different people. Um, uh, speaking from myself, I remember sitting in law school, and if I took a course that was interesting to me, you know, I would think, oh, what were the opportunities in that? Um, you know, I, I had an interest in employment, employment law, and employment discrimination, and so if you know, if a case came up, I, I was I, I would monitor it and track it. Um, I know for myself, I've always I'm I'm always sort of like a real estate junkie, a real estate fan. Like you can find me on Sundays just trolling through the pages when we had paper newspapers or trolling online looking at the latest real estate news and real estate developments and real estate trends and always following it. And so, again, for me, that was a passion. So, again, thinking about what you're passionate at. Um, you know, if you have a passion for criminal law, if you have a passion for civil rights, if you have a passion for, for real estate or, 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 or uh, uh, structuring uh, corporate transactions, I, I think it's, it's great to pursue that. And, and I also think it's, it's important to follow future trends um you know data and tech privacy is hot um and 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 and, and that's an area where there's significant growth um compliance 
is is a hot area. So um, I think, again, it's the intersection of tapping into your passion and what you have an interest in. Um, of course, being in my second chapter, passion drives me more. When I was younger, passion didn't necessarily drive me. But I, I think it's important for people to embrace what they love doing and then do it. Absolutely. Now, what are some of the lessons that you've learned from working uh, in various professions? Hmm, great question. What are some of the lessons that I've learned uh, in, in, in various professions? Um, from law enforcement, I learned that people are people, uh, whether they're on the right or the wrong inside of, 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 of breaking the law. I can remember in one day I could be in a million-dollar uh, apartment and and, 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 and meet a homeless and encounter a homeless person on the street and maybe learn a more valuable lesson from that homeless person on the street than I did being in that million, multi-million dollar apartment. Um, so I think I, I learned that. Um, I learned how to think fast and think on my feet because in law enforcement, uh, in policing, sometimes when something happens, you don't have the luxury of formulating a plan and learning how to execute. Um, I also have a passion in in, 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 in in event planning, event production. I got that skill because police officers are planning events all the time, so that was something that I learned. Um, from law, I learned how to think critically and to analyze situations um, and, uh, and learned how to ask more questions. Um, but it, but it, in, in all of those, I think... I've learned leadership skills. I learned how to move and motivate people. I learned how to tap into to to what's really important to somebody because I think when you let someone know that you see their value, it works and serves to motivate them to do the work that you need them to do. And and I think that leaders should always remember to do that. Well, thank you so much, Charlene. We'd like to thank you for being our guest today. Where can someone find you, you know, your website or social media? Can you share that information with us? Sure. Um, uh, so the easiest thing is always feel free to send me an e e uh, email. Uh, my email address is cbrown at c-b-r-o-l-a-w dot com. cbrown at c-b-r-o-l-a-w dot com. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at CBYans. And my redesigned, revamped, redeveloped uh, website will be coming soon. Fantastic. Thank you once again, Charlene. Thank Ladies, you. It was a pleasure. Pleasure to have you. Ladies and gentlemen, never apologize for being a great and powerful woman. That's my philosophy for the day. We'd like to thank you for being our guest and for being with us today. My name is Denisha Boston-Hill, along with Ray Schwetz, your co-host and producers. This is an NCC Foundation Business Leaders Council production. Visit ncc.edu slash WHPC for more information. Available on iHeartRadio as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcast, and Spreaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll talk to you next week.